pagan times, the Bretons were both priests and judges. The Breton was then regarded as a mysterious, half-inspired person and a divine power kept watch over his pronouncements to punish him for unjust judgments. Patrick Western Joyce Every great family of the Western Islands kept a Druid priest, whose duty it was to foretell future events and decide all causes civil and ecclesiastical. Martin Martin writing in 1697. De Breton was an expert in the hallowed traditional law and the obscure technical language in which it was enshrined. To act as judge in disputes submitted to his arbitration provided he was qualified to do so, was but one of his functions. D.A. Binchy In Irish Druids and Religions, it says, they promulgated the laws in a kind of recitative or monotonous chant, seated on an eminence in the open air. The Irish for judge is brihiv, from which we get the anglicised brehen. A brihiv or brehen means someone who is an expert, commentator, interpreter, educator and preserver of the laws and customs of the early Irish people. First and foremost, a brihiv or brehen was someone who adjudicated over disputes and legal proceedings. But in a looser sense, a brehen was an expert in the laws and customs, the equivalent of a solicitor or barrister or even an academic commentator which we have today. There was a point in early Irish history where the functions of a druid, a bard or filly or one of the poets, and a brehen or judge could be performed by one man. But these later separated into three distinct offices with distinct functions. So we had the druids or the dri, who were responsible for the functions of religion and spirituality. We had the poets or the filly who were responsible for poetry and history. And then we had the judges, or the brihiv, those who were responsible for law and justice. Christianity is officially said to have arrived in Ireland in 432 AD with the coming of St. Patrick. And with the coming of Christianity, we gradually see the decline of the significance of the Druids. And many of the Druids became Brehens, or Philly, and a lot of them actually went into the priesthood and became monks and scholars. But because these offices of Druid and Philly and Brehen once came from the same source, we can see that they are intricately linked and overlap in some of the descriptions and their qualities. The ancient Irish judges, for example, used poetry as mnemonic devices in training their legal students while at the same time the poets or the filly could issue a satire which had an effect of social denunciation, the sort of social denunciation that you could also get from a judgment against you. And both of these offices were heavily based on the mastery of language and of words. In Catherine Sim's work, Poetic Breton Lawyers of the 16th Century in Ireland, She said, the poets taught the correct grammar and spelling of classical Irish used by the lawyers in their pleadings. Irish literature supplied a fund of past mythical judgments customarily cited in the old Irish law tracts as precedents. Poetic utterance was seen as an invocation of divine judgment and traditionally the early poets were said to have functioned as judges. While it's easy to say that the Brehen fulfilled the role of a judge just as we know it today, it's sort of a historical shortcut. Rather, it would be more accurate to describe a Brehen as a legal expert who could be called upon as a mediator or an arbitrator. Seamus McManus said, Though the Brehen was but an arbitrator, So scholarly was he, so skilled in the laws and so wise and weighty his solemn judgments, that, sitting at a doll, where two witnesses were needed to prove a fact, his words were venerated and his awards sacredly respected. 
as though they were the awards of a judge consecrated to the judgment seat. And rare was it to find any person hardened enough to evade or reject them. End quote. The office of Brehan was highly regarded. Brehans retained their status and honor price even while visiting independent kingdoms or tuas, and they were a very influential class. Brehans that were attached to chiefs were awarded lands for their maintenance. If they had a good reputation, they could make a good living from their service fees. If they became educators, in later life their pupils would have a duty to care for them in retirement. To become a Breton, one must amass several years of diligent study and training under learned experts. As part of their studies, Brehans were required to memorize and recall huge amounts of information. Access to the legal profession was generally open to anyone with the requisite skill, ambition and finances. However, with the course of time, custom gave way to a hereditary tradition where trades and skills were passed on to family members and certain families came to be associated with certain professions. Sons of doctors tended to become doctors, sons of Brehans tended to become Brehans, and so on. In studying for the profession, the Brehan had not only to make himself master of the ancient legal records and of the very complicated legal rules, the abstruse technical terms, and all of the intricate forms in which the law was purposely entangled. He must also be a genealogist, a historian, and a poet. <laughs>